Oh, good day folks, this is uh, New View Outdoorsman here. Just going to do a little video on this little Altoids, a little Altoids kit I put together. And yeah, um, I know this thing used this kind of used to be the popular thing to do. A lot of people got net of it from what I've seen on YouTube, but I decided just to do one for a little bit of fun and show it to you guys. So as you can see, I got my Altoids tin can. Here, put in a couple. Is just put in a couple Ziploc bags for two reasons. One, the water to give some extra waterproof into the can, and two, because the bags would not fit in the can themselves. And by carrying two, I now have a couple extra water containers. Just bear with me one moment now. I guess the zip. Doing this all on my cell phone. So I apologize for the quality of the video. Um, I don't do a whole lot of videos, so I don't really have a proper camera set up. <laughs> and as you can see there, I just got around the can, I got some Gorilla Tape. So it helps give a little extra waterproofing and helps keep the can pretty closed. Like I say, just bear with me. Apologize for any dead air and everything. Just not open. Just like I said, still relatively new to doing YouTube videos and stuff, so. As you can tell by my channel, if you happen to check it out, you'll see that I only got a few videos on there, and the last one I think was a couple years ago. So I don't do them very often. Alright, well as you can see up here, I got some electrical tape underneath this. I have three razor blades for skinning animals and stuff. Underneath here, I have a few fish hooks. And just a touch on the razor blade point. I got three razor blades, like I said, so I can use them for skinning out a squirrel and like this if I happen to catch or even gutting fish. But one thing I've noticed a lot in YouTube videos is when guys do these all toy kits, nobody mentions you know they're talking about wilderness survival kits. And you know, they got their you know the razor blades or the little mini razor blade with the handle and stuff, and that's all well and good. They do have they do serve a purpose. But nobody else mentions the fact that, you know, about a pocket knife. And I mean, I know personally for myself, I wouldn't, I don't go anywhere without a pocket knife in general. But if I'm especially going in the woods, I'm definitely not going anywhere in the woods without taking some form of knife. So, usually in my pocket, pretty much at all times, I either have this here, my Swiss Army Champ, which is a really good Swiss Army knife. I got a couple blades, saw blade, screwdrivers, I got a fish scaler, I got a hacksaw blade, I got a magnifying glass, which will come in handy with some other things in the kit. Like I say, you get your typical tools there. Um, toothpick and that, tweezers, a little pen, um, corkscrew, which doesn't really come in handy, but what comes in handy for me is I wear glasses. It's got a little micro screwdriver, and it's got an awl and... Well, you know, various tools that you see on a Swiss Army knife. Or I take this, the Swiss Army Knife Hunter. It's just it's got a bigger blade. It's got less tools, but it's got a bigger knife blade and a bigger saw blade. Then it also has a serrated gut hook here and just a Phillips head screwdriver. And, well, as you can see, a little key ring there for if I want to put a lanyard or something onto it. And also, my Zippo lighter usually goes in my pocket. If I'm not carrying a Zippo, I'm usually carrying a Bic. So that gives me fire source right there so I just want to touch on that because like I said I never hear I don't usually hear tell of anybody saying well you know I got this all toys tin kit along with you know this brand of pocket knife for this knife you know I got various pocket knives multi tools and stuff that I usually carry in the woods with me sometimes multiples of pocket knives like I said sometimes I'll take my Swiss Army knife and my buck knife that goes on my and like my buck 110 folder just goes on my belt 
or my leather one of my Leatherman multi tools. All right, so let's get into the kit. Sorry about the little ramble. Right here, I got a little bit of just high vis marking tape. Always comes in handy, especially paired up with the pen that I have with my Swiss Army knife. I can mark like my initials and the date onto it for when I'm marking trail because where I live to here in Newfoundland, there's all kinds of marking tape left in the woods from people setting snares and cutting trail and stuff. So, I mean, you want to make sure that the trail of marking tape you're putting out is the marking tape you put out. So, I mean, like I said, I could put my initials or my name onto it plus a date. And then not only do I know that that was the trail I walked on, also if search and rescue has to come, you know, if I'm stuck in overnight or for a few days and search and rescue has to come in and find me, well, you know, they can follow, they can see the marking tape and if they're happen to take notice to it, they might notice, you know, that, I, that it is initialed and know that that was the pathway I was on. So it could help me there. I have probably about, whoop, I have about two and a half to three feet of Gorilla Tape just wrapped up around a piece of cardboard. Like I said, you know, various tastes for Gorilla Tape gear repair, uh, wound patching, because, yeah, I'm not even worrying about, I'm not even going to bother stitching myself up. Because if I'm in that kind of a situation, I know damn well I'm not going to be able to stitch myself up, especially if it's <laughs> bleeding pretty heavy. So I'd rather just tape it and get myself out of the woods and let the ex and go to the hospital and let the doctors, you know, stitch me up. Something they're good at. Uh, sorry about the shaking. Uh, just have a little bit of issue with nerves. All right, so yeah, Gorilla Tape. You know, it's nice, it's good, it's strong, it's waterproof, so. And I could also use it if I happen to get a hole in one of the Ziploc bags for carrying water. I can use that to patch up any hole, small holes there, so just to kill, fill in any leaks. I just got a little basic whistle. You know, pretty good sound onto it. I'm not going to blow it because, I mean, most of y'all know what a whistle sounds like anyway. I figure, you know, throw it in for a little bit of navigate, a little bit of signaling device. Always good. And here I just got a little bit of artificial sinew. So, again, like I said, gear repair and that. Um, I don't have any needles in my kit, but I do have fish hooks, which I can make a needle out of. Or, if need be, I can just, you know, carve a needle out of a small stick and use this with it for gear repair it's fairly strong so work pretty good um, here we got a piece of quadruple lot steel wool which I also have a ferro rod in the kit so this will take spark from a ferro rod and you know use it for tinder I have four stainless steel snares. They are already made, so for catching rabbits and stuff. Now I should point out that we're all like I said here in Newfoundland, we're not allowed using stainless steel stairs anymore. Legally. But since they're in a survival situation, I'm not gonna be worried too much about legalities for in a survival situation. I hope a wildlife officer comes in to get me, you know, comes in and finds me if I'm lost. You know. So, I'm not going to be too worried about legalities there. So, good, strong stainless steel snares. Also used for gear repair, too, if need be. Um, we have a saying here in Newfoundland that, you know, as a woodsman, you should never go in. If, you know, as long as you got rabbit and duct tape, rabbit wire and duct tape, you can fix anything you, you have, that you need to. Um, here I have some fishing line. Just some 20-pound test fishing line wrapped around a little sewing bobbin. I'm uh, not sure how many feet it is, but it's more than enough to... For the fishing around here because most of the fish around here we get is mostly brook trout and you know unless you're gonna and most of them don't get very big in size for most of the ponds so it was, does more than enough to do what I need to do here I just have a few split shot weights obviously for fishing and right here I have a bit of cherry cloth, so I can pair that up with the ferro serum rod that I have, or also I can use it as I have done before with the magnifying glass on my Swiss Army knife to give me, you know, to do give me a spark and make myself a little ember. Also, like I said, I got ferro rod here. 
it's been used a bit. And I just have some Ranger Bands wrapped around it here at the top. One for a handle and two also for a fire extender if need be. Because as most of you all know, Ranger Bands work really well. Then down at the bottom here, I have some Band-Aids. Underneath the Band-Aids, I just have a few alcohol prep pads for first aid. Um, also, like I said, in, the, the four, in a lot of the woods areas around where I go, there's also a lot of balsam fir and spruce trees. And balsam fir has, you know, anybody that does any time in the woods and has balsam fir trees, you know, they have nodules of resin. So in a first aid situation, if I have a cut and I happen to run out of the prep pads or whatnot and the band-aids, for whatever reason um, I can also use the resin to put over the wound not only to as an antiseptic to keep back you know to help kill any bacteria but also to seal the wound up I've used it I've done it before and it works fairly well I mean I'm not going to do it on a large on a you know an overly large gash but I mean if you just get little nicks and cuts on your fingers from woodworking or you know you have to scrape your finger along a branch when you're getting a fight of firewood or whatnot it'll work good for cleaving that up and then like I say as most people say you know you can use the cans you know for collecting water as well or boiling a little bit of water in I mean you're not going to boil a lot but yeah, you know it does work and then also considering the fact that the can is shiny that's why I didn't bother put in a signal mirror as I can just use the can as a signal mirror so that's just another signaling aid. Um, I don't have a compass in this kit because I do also have a paracord bracelet that I usually always wear on my wrist when I go in the woods. And that has um, a whistle, a small compass, and a small ferro rod with Strager, which the ferro rod works fairly well, and the compass. I tested it against another compass and it does give me a it does give me an accurate reading so as long as I got a general bearing um you know should be pretty good for navigating out. Alright. Well that's everything there. Like I said, this is just all the stuff here. I'm not gonna bother take out like I say the fish hooks or anything because I mean y'all know what a fish hook looks like and y'all know what razor blades look like because there's a million of these videos going around on the internet. And most of them all had the same stuff. I mean, yeah, it's not something you're going to want to rely on. I mean, if I'm going in for any length of time, I always got a knapsack with, you know, a folding saw or a folding saw and a knife and a hatchet and, you know, the various other things we take in the woods as, as woodsmen to help me out. Plus, usually in my bag, too, I also, in my knapsack, I got, you know, I got one liter water bottle, stainless steel cup, that sort of thing, so... Like I said, just to throw, this is mostly just for fun. Yeah, I'm going to carry it in the woods, I don't know. Just for a laugh, probably just go out one day and try it out. Just to make sure that, you know, I can get by on it if I had to. But, like I say, most times, I usually got other gear. Because I'm not really going to rely on this too much. This video was mostly done for fun. But I'm starting to ramble and this video is starting to get long. So, <laughs> I'll shut up there now because I know everybody hates long Nothing worse than a video with a long-winded person. Alright. So like I said, that's just my kit. And like I said, I usually have that paired up alongside this because I usually do always have a knife on me and a lighter, whether it be my Zippo or a Bic lighter or even just pack of matches or something. I usually always have multiple ways for fire and multiple ways for cutting tools on me at all times. So I believe anybody going in the woods should. Alright. Well, thank you for watching this video. Feel free to leave comments. Um, I would prefer positive, constructive comments, but, you know, hey, freedom of speech, so whatever. All right. Have a good day, folks. Bye.